Hi, this is Told. Welcome. And today we're doing a little bit different. We're looking at 24 lands. Why is it 24 lands? Do we need 24 lands? And let's look at some of the math behind why 24 lands is a necessity. And hopefully it can make some sense of the numbers and get you a better idea of how many lands you need to put in your deck. So, the reason why 24 lands is default is because your mana curve. So the mana curve is the number of cards that you have, um, you know, calculated up, you know, based on, you know, their mana cost. And then that tells you how many lands that you need uh, in order to cast those spells and what the average uh, number is. So when this number is closer to three or above three, or if you have a lot of cards that are more than three, then 24 lands works pretty good. Um, if you go below that, then you start to get into some situations where you want less lands. And so you don't get mana flooded and you get a 50% land draw and you're wondering why. Uh, that's probably because you have too many lands in your deck. Uh, so I made a little chart here. I know it's uh, mind-blowing and it's so much information on the screen. So I'm going to try to make some sense of it and try to explain it. But basically uh, what we have here is we have on the top, top column or top row is we have the number of cards that you uh, have drawn and the number of lands that you want to have. So in a 24 card deck, when you start the game, you're most likely going to have 98% chance of having one land or you'll have two lands by turn two. You know, if you're on the play and you draw your eighth card, then you have a 91% chance of having those lands. So that's um, you know, the 24 land ratio. So once you get up to, to, you know, 10 cards in your hand, which is turn four, you know, if you're on the play, there's a 63% chance that you'll have four lands in your hand, or, you know, you'll be able to play your turn four or your mana cost four card on turn four. And so that's kind of why magic does that. It's more for, you know, just basically every, you know, normal player that's building a deck. It's a pretty good average ratio, but, um, what you would expect you know, most people, you know, you want a third of your land. So in a 60 card deck, um, you know, you would expect 20, 20 lands is, you know, a third of the deck is, you know, you'll have 40 cards and then you'll have 20 lands. So, you know, you would expect that to be the case. But when you start looking at the numbers, once you get up to turn 10, you know, once you get five cards or 10 cards in your hand, you know, on turn four, there's a 44% chance that you'll have four lands in your hand. So, um, you don't really want to have 20 lands in your deck if you have a lot of mana costs that are four or above. You'd want to go up to maybe 22 lands or, you know, a higher number. So um, just to, um, to explain, I got these numbers off of MTG Nexus. They are not a sponsor. They're, I don't know this person who made this website. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Uh, but they did have a nice calculator. So here's uh, MTG Nexus's calculator. Uh, you can go to Tools and go to Drawing Odds Calculator, and that'll take you to here. Um, so this little tool is really helpful. So this is how I grabbed the numbers. So I said I had 24 lands. You know, I got 60 card deck. Cards drawn, you know, seven. And odds to have one land, and then you know you got 97, 98 percent chance. Right, so then you know, on turn two, you got eight cards, and you know, what's the chance of having two lands? So you could be like, you know, on turn uh, four, so that you have 10 lands or 11 lands, 10 cards on the play. So on turn four, you have 10 cards, and you know, what's the chance of having four lands? You know, so then you have you know, 63% chance of greater than or equal to the number there. So, you know, what's the chance of having three lands? You have a pretty high percentage chance of having three lands. So um, that's kind of where I got the information from. I assume this calculator is correct. I'm not a mathematician, um, but now we can take a look at some of the numbers. So um, I did uh, 25 to 20 lands in your deck so you can get an idea of being able to hit, you know, a uh, mana curve of, you know, so on. When you're able to play your fifth land, uh, what's the percentage chance that you'll actually have five lands? 
So you could see um, once you get up into, you know, the mana cost of five and greater, you know, possibly having 25 lands might be a thing. But if you don't have such expensive spells, you could start looking at uh, maybe you only need 21 lands in your deck if you only have a couple of four or greater mana cost spells and you don't really need to cast them immediately when um, when you're able to because, you know, you have other things that you want to cast. Um, so uh, this is a little chart. You could take a look at it and get an idea of, you know, like how many lands do I need in my deck? You know, you want to look at your deck. Uh, we'll take a look at a few different decks that I have um, and kind of see how they match up. And to go along with that, uh, I made a little deck right here to kind of talk about some of the ways to, um, you know, get less lands in your deck, but then you have cards that actually replace the land. So I put them in a little tier system. So we have our one drops here um, that help you to generate um, card draw and and or land. So the tier one cards are, you know, you basically play this card for one mana and it gets you a land. So, you know, green is top tier for that. No other cards really equal one mana value and an actual land itself. But there are some cards that let you do things like surveil three so otherworldly otherworldly gazed lets you surveil three cards so you get to look at the top three cards of your deck you can organize them how you want so you can you know if there's a land in those you could put it you know quicker up or you could put it you know back lower it also has flashback so you get double use out of this spell so that's why i put this in the second tier of item of cards and then we have uh, for color list we have candy trail which allows you to scry two so you can look at the top two cards of your library if one of them is a land or not, you know, you could scry those to the bottom if you're looking for lands, or you can keep it on top if it is a land. And then it also has the secondary ability of drawing a card, so it kind of does, like, the top three cards of your library. So when you're doing a 20-card or 20-land deck where you have a 33% chance of drawing a land, when you look at the top three cards of your library or, you know, you deal with the top three cards of your library, there's a pretty big chance, you know, 50% chance that one of those cards is going to be a land, and so you'll be able to get your you know, second or third land drop, you know, using Candy Trail. And then moving on to the lower tier, you know, tier three kind of cards, there's the Ock Clan Landmark, you know, it uh, scries two, so it kind of does a similar thing as a Candy Trail, but it's white, and, you know, it allows you to look at the top two cards, so, like, if neither one of those are lands, you can put them to the bottom, and then the third card possibly will be a land, so it helps you to get to that, to that space. Uh, consider also does a similar thing where you can surveil one and then you draw a card so it's kind of like the top two cards of your library that's why i put it there um the fairy dream thing is a little bit of a stretch it surveils one so you only get to look at the top one card but it also has a secondary effect of later on when it dies you know you can draw a card it's not that great it's really hard to find black cards or you know stuff that's not blue white and green to help you with that mana fixing but it does uh, do a decent job of that and so if your curve is low enough you know this could help you out um, and then a couple of other cards that um, are not the best but you know they're a little bit better than just a simple draw cards is you know this one you look at the top two cards so you can you know possibly pick that up so it's kind of like the consider but it's not quite as good as the consider I think because you don't um, you don't get to chew, you know, you don't get to do that. It's at sorcery speed. It's not at instant speed, so it's a little bit less. Um, timely interference is just a card replacement. Um, so probably that could probably go lower. Um, but it is instant speed, and you do get the card immediately, um, you know, for that. So I tried to pick out as many cards as I could find. So there could be some cards that I missed as far as mana fixing. Um, but let's move on to the uh, two mana casting cost spells. Um, so we have Curate, uh, you know, it's two mana, you surveil two and draw a card, so that's why I put it in the top tier of two mana casting cost spells, is you look at the, you know, it's basically the top three cards of your library, so most likely one of those cards is going to be a land, and you get to draw it and put it in your hand. Uh, Joint Exploration does the same thing. It does have the added kicker of effect, of, you know, you could possibly play a land from your hand, so, you know, it's a three mana. We're trying to kind of avoid that, because most likely you're going to have, like, two lands or one land, um, so that's why I would prioritize having the one uh, mana cost spells over the twos, but you can have the twos in there that can also help you to find that third land um, if you get it. Um, 
The Terrarium is two mana and it gets a your land, so that's why it's top tier number one. Because you know you basically play this card and you get a land, so you get your third land drop if you don't already have it in your hand. Uh, the farm hand I put it in a tier two list just because it's only specific to planes. Um, it does get you a land, so it, it could you know if you're playing white or playing mono white, you know it's definitely a, could be up in that upper tier. But since it's only a specific planes and it's only a basic planes as well, uh, I kind of put it there because it's restricted. Where all these other ones is um, you know any basic land card. Right, and so glimpse of the core is a similar thing. It only finds you a forest, but it does put it into the battlefield, which is good. But it only finds you a forest, so that's why it's not quite tier one. It's more of a tier two. Uh, Plunge into winter is a two mana casting cost where you get to scry one and draw a card. So it's basically the top two cards of your library, and you could tap a creature, but you don't have to tap a creature. So it says tap up to one. So that means you don't have to target a creature. You could just cast it, and and tap zero creatures. I don't know if you can cast this if there's no creatures on the battlefield. Probably you can. I would assume so. Um, moving on, we've got Chart of Course. is another you know tier 3 card where you draw 2 cards. Uh, you discard a card unless you attack. So it does have a little caveat on that. But you do get to look at the top 2 cards of your library. Possibly getting one of those as a land. And you have to discard. So it's a little bit of a drawback. Um, Clayfire Bricks. You, know, you get to search for a planes. Reveal it. You put it into your hand. Um, you know, it's kind of similar to the Ambitious Farmhand, uh, but it is an artifact, it's not a creature, so that's why the Farmhand's a little bit higher in that set, um, because this isn't a creature, it's just an artifact, you do gain two life, but we're really concerned about, you know, getting that land. Uh, for red, we have Reckless Impulse and Ren's Resolve, which... Um, allows you to exile a top two card of your, card of your library, and then you can play those cards. So you know if you're at two two mana, you don't have the third one. You could reckless impulse. You could play that land, you know. But probably you already played two lands that turn. But on your next turn, you could play a land. So on turn three, you should have that land. Uh, that's the best thing I could find in red. And then treasure map is a little bit of an iffy one. It probably could be bumped down one, just because it turns into a three mana cost. But it does allow you to scry, it does allow you to get treasures later on, so it is kind of a good card. Um, so yeah, maybe it should be dropped down to the, you know, a little bit lower of a, a tier level. And then I put in the Compass Gnome and the Dune Mover. They do allow you to search for a basic land, but it puts it on top of your library, so it kind of doesn't let you draw the card. And so that your next draw is going to be that basic land, so it kind of wrecks your uh, turn three draw. But if you're looking for that third land, it does find it for you. So those are cards that are probably not played as much, but they actually are probably pretty good for, um, you know, for the red and black decks that don't have uh, these other cards. I would probably wouldn't use it, um, you know, in the blue and green. I would probably use one of these other cards as it's a little bit better. Um, but, you know, for those, you know, deck colors that are kind of lacking... Um, it's pretty good. It would probably be also work pretty good in a domain deck as well for the, you know, get that extra colors, different mana that you need. And then I threw in uh, Experimental Augury, uh, Impulse. Impulse looks at the top four cards of your library. Uh, this one looks at the top three, and this one looks at the top three. But, um, you, you know, you can put one card into your hand, put the rest in the bottom, put one of those in your hand, you know, put one of those in your hand. So you can use those to find your land cards. Um, you know, impulse lets you look at four, so it's kind of a little bit above these two. Um, but uh, augury does have the proliferate option, so you know, sometimes thinking about the cards, um, if you don't have them in the beginning of the game, later in the game, they might have more benefit. So augury, you know, there's an argument of which one you should use um, over the other one. And then for red, thrill the possibility. I love this card, but I never get to use it because I hate the discard cards but it does allow you to get two cards off the top of your library um in red which you know i you know maybe ren's resolve is a little bit better but you know if you do have a deck where you want to discard cards and get cards into your graveyard thrill the possibility works pretty good and then moving on to some um lesser tiered cards because they're just card replacements there's a number of card replacements that are two mana drops you know like you know wedding invitation you draw a card when it play it prism you play it you know draw a card Factory draw a card, so I would say you know, Prism is um, my card of choice over those other two. Minus Wedding Invitation, obviously, it has the ability to make a creature unblockable, but Prism, you know, helps you with that mana um, fixing. So, if you had a multicolored, three color deck or more, uh, Prism is probably pretty good. 
um, since the revelry is, uh, I just threw it in there just to talk about it because you know you do get to draw that card, but you know it's a situational where you have to have less cards in your hand than your opponent, and if you're struggling with mana, you might not have it. So you know that card could probably go you know over to the honorable mentions part. Um, so I have some cards that are over here. So these are basically you know although they're one mana casting cost. And so if you only have one land in your hand, you know, these cards could get you a draw and get you closer to that third card because you really want to draw three cards. And, you know, by that time you draw the three card, there's a big chance that one of those three um, would be a land. So it's only drawing you one, but it's costing you two mana to use them, you know, like the Soul Lantern and that. And, you know, things like the Survivor of Corliss, you know, you can exile it and from your graveyard so you can get a creature out it gets killed and then you know you could pay two mana you know so on turn one you put that out and then if you have two mana but you don't have three and then you could scry it and, you know as a way to go dig up is another card probably a top um top tier green card but i only had two of them so i didn't want to put it in there because i wanted to organize them with the fours um so dig up is like another card that you can have for green but they already have so many um yeah, jack o is just another two casting cost. And then the Sphere, this costs you four mana to draw two cards. So it continues to be bad, worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, so that's kind of the concept is... Um, come back and look at the chart. The concept is that you can go with less lands and have a few of those other cards in there to help mana fixing. So if you have like four or six or maybe even eight of... You know the mana fixing cards then you can go with a little bit less lands you know so you could you know you can almost replace like maybe two to one put in two of the mana fixing cards for one land or three to one three of the mana fixing cards for one land and so you can kind of squeeze that out allow you to you know the surveil and scry effects are really good at being able to um have multiple you know versatility um Whereas, you know, once you get your land, now it still has value where, you know, if you have lands on top and you're flooded with lands, you can push those away and get really good cards um, in your deck. But yeah, so if you're building a deck and you only have, you know, a lot of three mana costing unless, you know, you could go down to 20, 20 lands um, if you wanted to, you know, depending on where it is. So just like looking at this chart, you know, if you have four mana casting costs, you know, 22 lands might be the good spot to go um if you're having a lot of five and aboves you probably want to go up to 25 lands something that i don't really do very often but looking at the chart and looking at the numbers and the math um it really shows you how important the lands are and you know 24 is a good sweet spot for that as well but um you know just something to think about you know you can do 23 lands if you have some fours just four drops and below you know you can squeeze that out and even if you have a few more above that um, something that you know just something to think about and i just really really wanted to look at the math on that uh, let's take a look at some decks all right so right here we're looking at uh my blue artifact deck that i'm working on for um going to mythic with um Right now I have 19 lands in there because my mana curve is really close to two. Uh, and so when you look at the chart, I don't even have 19 lands on there, but with my mana cost of two, it, it's probably gonna be, you know, for for three lands, you know, it's still gonna be above the 50% percentile mark. So this will probably drop down to 60 for three lands. Um, so I'm really trying to squeeze that out. And then in the deck, I have the candy trail for mana fixing and is that it i think that's it there's also the schooners in there for drawing extra cards uh, yeah so i have a few cards that draw you know allows for the scry uh, one card to you know so i have five cards that allow me to get extra mana but like i said most of my mana value is you know two and so getting up to that you know three value should be pretty easy Still play testing that deck, still working it out. So looking at my Packle Vanguard deck, um, I have 25 lands in there with a mana cross of 3.2, so it's a little bit high. But I really want, 
to be able to hit those four drops. I have a lot of four drops in this deck, and it's really important, you know. So the, hitting the Vanguard on curve is really important. So you know, for this deck, it's Anna Pakel on turn three, Vanguard on turn four, and then you start to look at it. So when you look at 25, there's a 68% chance on turn four that we have you know, the four lands that we need, and then, you know, a 50% chance on t for the, the mana costing fives that we have. Um, so we have a few, you know, higher up ones, not too many, but it really gets that four mana curve good, and so I think that's why the deck performed pretty good. Um, and now if we go to Batscam, another deck that's been performing well. Um, we look at this, we have 24 lands. Um, don't really have that many one drops and I don't have any mana fixing because I made this deck before I started looking at the numbers. Um, but we have a 3.4 average, which is a little bit high. It's a little bit deceptive because we have the um, Flesh Gorger and that's actually a three cost. But we do have a lot of big, big bodies. So we definitely need that 24 lands. We might even probably could have went up to 25, but with 24 lands for the four mana casting cost, Blood Letter. So if we look at the number, there's a 63% chance that we um, get the blood letter out on curve, um, meaning that the, when we play our fourth land, we'll be able to cast it as soon as possible without any other, you know, things. I do have Sugar Rush um, to replace a card in there. Uh, I didn't, you know, maybe I, you know, take a look at it later, but, uh, you know, maybe I had in the Fairy Vandal and stuff. But, uh, yeah. And so looking at... Uh, Another deck that I'm working on that I should have a video out shortly of is the, you know, Bedrock Toxic deck um, that I'm working on. So we have, you know, very low curve on this deck. Um, we have a two curve average and we have 20 cards. So by turn three, um, with that, you know, there's a 64% chance that we'll have three lands in our hand. Um, I don't really have any mana fixing on this side uh, besides you know, a couple of draw cards. Um, so I have, you know, not quite looking for lands cards. Maybe I should add those in. Maybe it'll get added in once I play this deck and see and make some changes. Um, but yeah, since the curve is so low, it's pretty good. Uh, what do we have for that's a bigger curve? Ah, here we go. Probably Beanstalk. Probably could go up on that one. So here we have the Prowling Beanstalk deck. Probably, you know, it has some Zendikars cards in there. It has, you know, the Prodigy in there to draw cards. It has up the Beanstalk to draw cards and replace cards. So, you know, that's, you know, not the best, but it does have some card draw in order to get you to more lands and, you know, try to get to that fourth land so that you can get the Zendikar out. I did go with 24 lands on this deck, and maybe it could be up to 25 when you start looking at the numbers because you really want to hit Zendikar on curve. And so Zendikar on curve at 24 is 63%. It's actually pretty good, or not too bad. But, you know, in order to get the, you know, probably should go up to 25 lands on that deck um, because we do have a lot of five drops. Even though we do have Zendikar to fi help fix that, and we have Awake in the Woods to help with that, and, you know, a couple draw spells. But probably, in all reality, this should be 25 lands uh, when you start looking at the numbers. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say about that subject. So, um, you know, when you're making your decks, think about adding in some of these cards in order to help you with your mana fixing and, you know, put in less lands. Uh, take a look at the website, you know, take a look at uh, MTG Nexus if you want. You know, you could look at cards. You could say, you know, I got four copies of a card and, you know, I drew three of them and, you know, it was, you know, 15... You know, or maybe turn turn five or six or something. Odds to have uh, three card draw is 11. And, you know, what's the chances of, you know, me drawing three cards with 11? And so when you get flooded on one card and you have more land, more cards than lands, even though I only run four copies, you can take a look at those numbers and be like, come on, magic, 1% chance that I got that. Um, but yeah, this has been told. Uh, let me know your thoughts. If you got any other cards, you know, leave some comments. But um, I hope this helps you out in crafting your decks. And like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.